and welcome back to All Day Live. We're really glad that you're here. We're covering the weather today for you uh, up until 3 o'clock. So we'll be on uh, Fox 9 until our normal time, 2 o'clock, and then we'll be streaming on your Fox local app for a bonus hour and maybe even more, likely even more after that, where uh, we'll have more coverage for you on the afternoon shift as well. So stick with us. We got you covered. We have uh, meteorologist Jennifer McDermott is here. Lauren Andrego is watching the roads for us, which are starting to the west of the metro to get a little uh, messier. So uh, right now we want to shift gears just a little bit because uh, I don't know if you saw our newscast gosh, a couple of days ago when we were talking about, maybe it was late last week, the giant 66 million year old fossil that uh, was trying to make its way through a window at Winona State uh, and that's where it is housed right now. So we've been talking about dinosaur fossils and then uh, Kara set up this interview and we were like, is this the same thing? Nope, this is different, but just as interesting. So imagine North Dakota, you know, millions of years ago, dinosaurs roaming. Well, recently the North Dakota Ge uh, Geological Survey discovered a T-Rex skeleton in southwest North Dakota. Uh, first discovered the bones in September of 24, so about a year ago, but they uh, didn't start excavating those bones until this year. And then there's more to the story. So we wanted to check in with North Dakota senior paleontologist Clint Boyd, who managed this operation. Thank you so much for checking in. Thanks, happy to be here. Yeah, so um, we have so many questions, but tell us, I guess, start from the beginning and, and tell us about, because first I think we go, whoa, T-Rex skeleton, North Dakota, <laughs> my goodness, that's just kind of right off the bat, blows your mind a little bit. Um, tell us how this all came to be. Yeah, so we were out there, like you said, in, in September of 2024, we were actually working a site uh, in the Hell Creek Formation, very end of the age of dinosaurs. Uh, but it was a site that had crocodile bones at it. And we were revisiting and, and recording the geology there for a paper that we're working on. And so we'd been out there for a long, hot day. And uh, the day got over and we were, had about a mile hike back to our vehicle. And normally when you're hiking out in these areas, you walk right along the, the big steep outcrops to look for fossils uh, while you're going back and forth. This time we were just really tired. So we went through an area we don't normally go through that has kind of lower outcrops, not a lot of potential for fossils, but they can be there. And it just so happened as we were walking back, we walked right up on uh, these bones from what turned out to be a partial Tyrannosaurus skeleton. Whoa, okay. Did, when you saw what you saw, did, did you, I don't know, did you know kind of what you were looking at or, or how much did you kind of absorb in that moment? Yeah, so one of the first bones that we walked up on was a uh, vertebra from the spine, and uh, it was sitting on the surface, so it was a little bit weathered, some of the bone had broken, and uh, dinosaurs like T-Rex on the, the theropod side, they have a very distinctive texture to their bones, especially T-Rex, they've got a lot of hollow areas inside the bones to lighten up the skeleton. So when you find even a partial bone from a Tyrannosaur, you can tell right away that that's what it is. And that's what we saw in this vertebra. It was broken open. And the moment I looked down, I'm like, that's a vertebra. And that is not from the normal animals we find. That's from the one that we always hope to find. Oh my goodness. What was that like? How many people were there? Were you just high-fiving each other? What was that like? So there was two of us because um, <laughs> we hadn't expected to make any big finds that day. We weren't really searching. We were going to a known site, just finishing some stuff up. So the two of us were very excited. And then we kind of did a like, OK, you go this way and look for some more. I'll go this way and look for some more. And the other individual that was with me just walked around a little knob of rock and then found the main portion of the specimen coming out where part of the hips, one of the legs and a bunch of ribs uh, were all kind of piled up against each other over in that spot. So then it got really exciting and but then you realize well it's also the end of the day we're going to start losing light soon now we have to walk away and leave this here at least till tomorrow and you don't get to really understand what you found at least until the next day for sure so now let me try to understand this because i think we think of you know people who are excavating and paleontologists and we think about digs are you saying that this was just all right there on the surface yeah, so it's in a kind of a flat area, kind of a prairie type area, but without any grass there. Uh, relatively low, there's only about maybe two feet of elevation change through the area that we found it at. And so um, 
the bones are still coming out of the ground, but only with about a foot of rock over the top of them, which is actually about perfect, you know, if you want something nice and easy to dig out and to work on, but not the place that you typically look for to find these kind of things, so. Okay, can you explain to us, uh, kind of in, in layman's terms here, this area that you're talking about? I mean, you described it as a known site, so clearly known mm -hmm. to pe people like you, paleontologists. I mean, if people are watching at home and they're like, oh, I love dinosaurs, can I just go to North Dakota and start walking around and maybe I'll stumble on something? Like, what kind of an area are we talking about? So this is uh, down in the southwest corner of North Dakota where uh, you get kind of the, the Badlands, typical Badlands type uh, exposures with the bare rock out surrounded by prairie. Um, anyone, you know, on public land, anyone can go out and look for fossils, but you can't pick them up without a permit if it's on public land. But if you happen to either know people who own private land or can speak with a private landowner and they'll let you go look on private land, you can look for whatever you want and you can pick up whatever you want. The fossils belong to the landowner, so that's just a decision with them, so. Wow. C compared to, and I, I'm gonna throw this at you, you may not know the answer, but compared to like other states or other areas in the country, I mean, is North Dakota considered, is that area considered kind of like a hotbed for, for for fossils and things like that, um, or how, how would you characterize it? Yeah, so North Dakota is a really great state for fossils. Um, pretty much the whole surface of North Dakota has rocks at the surface that can produce fossils, different ages and different parts of the state, depending on where you're at. Uh, but it's a really great place to look for fossils. And it's a really great place specifically for this end of the age of dinosaurs, because we have that, that impact layer that records the very end of the age of dinosaurs. So we can study what's happening right before and we can study what happens right afterwards. Uh, so it is a really great spot here um, for anybody looking to get into paleontology. Un unbelievable. I mentioned off the top here before we intro you that uh, we've been covering this the the fossil the 66 million uh, year fossil your old fossil that went into the window of Winona State yep. have you been kind of watching all of that and that also it's different but it also came from North Dakota is that right Yep, so that's um, from the same general region of the state down there in the southwest, uh, same formation, Hell Creek formation. Um, and so I've been paying attention to that through the news. I haven't seen the specimen myself or talked to the individuals who collected it, but it's it looks like just a gorgeous specimen, an amazing mm -hmm. discovery. Um, and we're always happy to see, you know, scientists make great discoveries here in North Dakota, it really emphasizes how great the fossil record here. So, you know, I, I hope they get some really great information out of that specimen and we learn a lot from it. Yeah, so it, it, it's, like the size of a small vehicle. Uh, like I said, they had to open up a bunch of windows to even get mm -hmm. it through uh, Winona State. And I think it was a Winona State alum who helped discover it or had a, had a key piece in it. That's why it, it's being housed there. Tell me about studying these 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 fossils now. You mentioned, you know, hoping to get some information. So what, what types of things, just generally speaking, are you pulling and how can that kind of help in, inform us moving forward? So, um, this discovery, our Tyrannosaur discovery, there's Tyrannosaurus rex is not a very common animal. Um, there are several specimens out there, but every new specimen that we find teaches us more about the animal, about its life history. This one is not perfectly fully grown. It's about 10 to 15% smaller than a typical full grown individual. So it can help us a little bit learn more about that kind of late juvenile into adult um, growth stage. Um, and also there's, you know, there's a lot of research going on right now um, pointing out that there's probably more than one species of Tyrannosaur in the Hell Creek um, between Tyrannosaurus rex and another one called Nanotyrannus. And it's always possible that this specimen could have some bearing on that discussion as well once we get more of it uncovered. So um, right now, because a lot of it is still in the ground, you know, there's a lot of potential questions we could ask. Uh, the specific ones we'll follow up on will depend on what we get out of the site. Okay. Um, did you say Nanotyrannus? Yeah, Nanotyrannus. It's that another Tyrannosaur species. Yep. That's awesome. Um, what a cool, you know, what a cool job you have, first of all. <laughs> Man, I, you know, I just, I don't know. This would have never come across my plate as like something I, I would want to do in my career because I'm like, well, you know, like it's a lot of, this is fascinating. And the keys that you're able to pull from this um, and, and the puzzle pieces you guys are able to put together, it is really incredible. Um, so do a lot of people, just really quickly, do a lot of people know about this area? And are you concerned that, you know, people may come and, kind of, you know, like almost kind of pillage areas that maybe need to be um, kept more secure? 
So I'm not too worried about um, people pillaging the site. Uh, you know, we're not releasing the exact location where it's at. You know, we're being kind of vague on it for that reason uh, until we can get more of it out. But, um, you know, sometimes you do have places that will, will mess with sites or people that just, you know, are interested and they want to go out there and they might damage a site yeah. without realizing they're damaging it, right? Because they don't know what the fossils look like necessarily and what's important. So um, I think just not releasing the exact location where the fossils are at right now is is probably protection enough um, from anything that's going to go on um, and then we're just excited to, to be able to dig this out and, and to be putting together a big international team to get this job done. Incredible. I would love to check back in with you down the road and see you know some of the other things that you've been able to find and see how you're you're, you're going with this this T-Rex uh, as well. Um, thank you for taking some time to talk with us today. This is really really uh, interesting stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to talk with you anytime. All right. Thanks, Clint. Take care. Thank you. Yep. You too. All right. How cool is that? Man, not every day.